I'm just sat by my pond feeding my fish this morning. It's uh, Sunday morning and uh, can you hear them splashing? Can't, uh, yeah, just splashing behind me. Um, it's Sunday morning um, and it's um, the second day of the Evesham Angling Festival. Um, I fished yesterday, it was absolutely rock hard, worst possible conditions, um, really clear, no rain and um, not a lot of flow and a uh, sunny, clear river that's absolutely battered. And um, I was fourth in my 10 peg section with a pound and a half and only four pound won the section. And, uh, and that was the peg below me, which was the M peg before the, uh, before the ferry rope. So, um, um, and there was a two pound nine and no one else broke two pounds. So I uh, could have had three pound, I think if I just fished ground bait and pinky, but I was trying to fish for the win. So, um, um, but anyway, today is a different day. It's the same conditions, it's going to be even sunnier, even hotter, I think. But it's um, bloodworm and jokers allowed. Um, so I'm going to just show you a few bits and bobs um, about all the effort that idiots like me go through just to catch a few fish. Um, starting with uh, what I was up to last night. Well, it's uh, 6.30 in the evening. I've just fished day one of the Evesham Festival and tomorrow is the uh, the big one, three and a half grand to the winner and bloodworms allowed. Now I've got my bait, um, as expected, it's pretty rubbish. In fact, it's pretty much unusable with the bloodworm. Didn't want to be doing this, but um, I'm going to have to jump in my uh, my old bloodworm pond and uh, uh, I've just driven an hour out of the way just to uh, get some bloodworm. So at least I've got some to put on the hook for tomorrow. I should just be wasting my time. There'll be people there with good bait, and there'll be people like me that haven't got any good bait, big flaccid bloodworm that's absolutely useless for a uh, hard roach at Evesham. So uh, we're going to have a quick jump in. I've been warned the mozzies are really bad, so it's warm. It's 6.30, it's still really warm, but I've got to put my old hood and sleeves up because the mozzies are pretty bad. But uh, we'll see how long it takes to get uh, a decent hook pack's worth of bloodworm, and then I can go home and have a bit of a keep on the set here because I need it I'm knackered so I uh, don't want to be doing this but uh, if you want to win it you've got to put the effort in sometimes haven't you <laughs> and I used to come here all the time for Evesham so uh, so I quite like coming in here but I don't really want to be doing it after fishing five hours uh, on a rock hard river and then um, with a big match tomorrow we'll get our gear and we'll start uh, scraping away this is my blood worm tray very very old it's not great it's falling apart a bit but it, it does the job and these are me, me old faithful blood worm blades. This is one I've been using for years. Just cut through the silt. It's very shallow here. It's about probably two and a half foot of silt and a foot of water above it. <laughs> we'll see what we can get. You can see all the mud clouding up. It's quite shallow here. We'll go through once. See what we got. Yeah, there's blood worm. Not a bad bit there. You just tap that in there. Just fish just top behind me. There's just uh, pike and all sorts in this lake. Uh, quite a bit of weed on that, but there is some bloodworm on there as well. That's it. We just got to carry on. Just got to carry on doing this until we. Uh, do we get enough for the hook? Yeah, it's not bad at all, is it? I thought it'd be weedier than this. Last time I came, it was choked with weed. So, uh, right, let's carry on. Get this rubbish off. There's some blood worm in there. The crack is, this top tray collects all the rocket, all the rubbish. There's a little blood worm in there, but we can deal with that. Wash that off. Don't drop it. That there, and then in here should be lots and lots and lots of blood worm. Yeah. Enough for what I want anyway. I'm not the best at scraping, but it's very satisfying to get it. At least I know I can actually catch with it. So that's it. Let's get it out and uh that more close up. Get sticks on the surface tension, you scoop it up like that as well. Lovely, lovely blood worm. So we'll get some of course, that's the stuff. 
Lovely. Put all that off and then I'll be ready for tomorrow. I've just been riddling off my uh, my blood worm and um, well, firstly this is the hook pack that I've bought and obviously it's not kept very well. I have had it frozen um I've had freezer packs on it, not directly on it but in a cool bag and it's well it's not on really unusable I'm sure other people would have looked after it a bit better than what I have maybe it should have gone straight into water but I think I'd have lost two-thirds of it if I did that but anyway that's that's it doesn't matter because I've gone and got myself this so uh, anyway tomorrow I'll be fishing with confidence and that's the main thing but I'm not too bothered about the feed so much but you need to be able to put something decent on the hook and uh, well, you ain't gonna get much better than that. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, relax and breathe a sigh of relief. We have got some decent hook bait for tomorrow. <laughs> um, but they're actually very generous packs. You're never quite sure what size packs you're gonna get. That's probably the limit there, that one pack. And that is excellent stuff. Look at that, it's, a, it's Russian Joker, so it's a little bit smaller. It's like inactive, doesn't dance off the bottom like um, Polish or English Joker. Um, it comes from more brackish sort of water. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I just fluff it up there. You can actually see it's still alive and wriggling, and it does no signs of much dead. Fair play to um, the people that supplied the bait because the normal person that would supply it has had difficulties. So you know we nearly didn't have any bait for Evesham. So you know better some than none. So uh, we could have been in a situation where no one had, or only a select few had got some bait. Um, but at least we all have got bait. It's a little bit more expensive than normal. Um, but joke is excellent. Bloodworms, very ropey. But that's that's normal. That ha that's for years and years and years. Um, when I was first started bloodworm fishing, people often had, you know, different qualities of bloodworm and joker and stuff. And that's that just happens. That's the nature of fishing. So, but that's why it's it's worthwhile getting in late and getting quality hook bait. This is fantastic feed. The hook bait wasn't so clever, but um, I can go tomorrow with confidence now. That's my compost heap there, fig tree up there. And uh, this is, you've heard of Terre de Somme and Terre de Riviere. Well, this is Terre de Arthur. So it's a lovely black soil where, uh, where I live. And I just find it's the perfect consistency for uh, for when I need soil. Um, Topsoil from B&Q and that is rubbish. It's just all fibrous and uh, um, doesn't have any sort of binding properties. This stuff is a perfect um, texture and everything. It's like molehill really, molehill soil. And that's all, what is molehill soil? It's just uh, topsoil that's been dug up and riddled for you. So, uh, but I just dig it up. It's nice and dry at the moment, so I can uh, just riddle it through. Pass it through, try and do it all one-handed. And what you're left with is a beautiful, still got a bit of binding in there, but it's lovely and fine. Nice dark, perfect colour for me. Nice and dark. A lot of uh, molehill soils, um, molehills, and that can be the wrong consistency and colour and everything. But I know my my soil in my garden is perfect um, colour and everything. I know there's no chemicals. I know there's nothing been uh, um, put on the soil. So uh, what can be better than uh, homegrown mud? <laughs> and uh, this is for bulking out my ground bait, um, giving it a bit of weight to go down without any feed value. And I use it in all my sort of silver fish mixes on rivers, sometimes on canals and lakes as well, but it's mostly for the rivers, just to add a bit of weight and a bit of a uh, bulk without adding feed, which I'll definitely need at Evesham. That's been my mix today. Two bags of uh, Benz's Hemp Seed Match Black have gone in. Silver X Roach, I've actually just pushed it through um, a pinky wheel just to get rid of the bigger husks. There's a few bigger husks in there. Um, on a river like Evesham, I don't want too many big particles popping off the bottom with Bloodworm and Joker. And uh, a bag of Terre de Arthur, <laughs> or mud as we call it. And that's it, that's been my mix today. Uh, well, actually, it's, uh, three three bags like that's worth, and uh, so that makes up my uh, my limit. 
turning me on casters or casters depends what part of the country you're from it depends how many r's are in the word caster <laughs> caster or caster what do you reckon yeah lovely little shells turning there nice fresh casters and then i've got some old pinkies they're a couple of weeks old but i've had them bagged up and uh just running the skins off and uh um they'll be fine pinkies are last forever i find so uh but yeah it'd be nice to catch some casters at the weekend uh yeah i'd love to show you around the rest of my uh messy carriage but uh, i think you'll be shocked to see how messy it is that's how i store my casters i put them in one of these brown paper bags wicks out all the moisture keeps them nice and crisp and stops them burning in the bag and then uh tie them up in a potty bag pop them in the fridge there's an odd they will tear a little bit but look how fresh they are in there and um what i'll do i'll probably change the bag every every two or three days might change that a bit sooner because that one's slightly ripped but um yeah it's worth getting these get them from amazon or whatever just a cheap bag but get the big bags i think these are 10 inch by 10 inch um because they come in all different sizes but at least you can get a couple of pints in one of these then that's it they'll go in the fridge and they'll last like that for a week easy um happily use them for cart for much longer than a week but um yeah just keep an eye on them give them a bit of air every few days maybe but yeah good to go a load of hemp and tears all ready for uh for the river i've got a big i don't know a few points there worth like freshly cooked i put loads of extra water in as well so i get loads of oil so i use all that oil in me uh in my ground bait and mixing my ground bait i've just done another pan as well there basically just soak it all up for um soak it overnight and then uh whack it in and bring it to the boil and let it simmer so um for it could be 20 minutes could be 30 minutes until you you want them shoots coming through i sometimes overcook it i've overcooked this little bit quite a bit so you've got all them nice big shoots this this batch isn't quite so heavily cooked so there's plenty of hookers in there i can find um so i can pop it on the hook as well um the only thing i do i put um i put a pinch of um rock salt in just just uh, normal old rock salt there um and i also always put a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of sugar in as well depending on how much there is it's just me being a, a bit funny i if i'm cooking food i do a lot of cooking at home and uh, on this harp in these pans <laughs> don't tell the wife <laughs> and uh yeah um and i and you know i i think it's all these a little a little palatins aren't they it's like having uh salt and vinegar on your chips you know uh fish and chips taste nice but put a bit of salt and vinegar on them they taste even nicer so uh and in cooking we all use a lot a little pinch of salt i'm not a massive huge user of salt um for health reasons but i, I think it does add a bit of flavor and it, so it can't do your fishing bait any harm either so uh and also i've got some tears there they've been uh soaked i've soaked them but leave plenty of water on them oh we're getting a bit of a skin on there um um cover them in twice as much water as as you uh where's the dry one? there's there's the dry ones and then if i just get some of these hopefully they won't slip oh. The difference in size they're massive they just swell up so much soak them overnight and they'll really double up in size so just be careful with that when if you i always like to put them in a big jug or something tall so you get plenty of water on them but they will suddenly blow up um, with extra water so and uh and that that's iron tablets ferrous sulfate I always pop a couple in with my tears sometimes put some in my hemp as well and it does help turn them absolutely jet black you can actually see the coloration of my wooden spoon um and um, that's from the ferrous sulfate or the iron uh, so in the old days i think people used to put an actual piece of iron metal in in their pans when they were boiling them but um, an iron tablet does exactly the same job these will go dark they're quite dark as it is but what i like to do with tears is, is i'll I'll pull them in as soon as they've cooled down. I'll bag them up, and um, I'll I'll in little batches, and then I'll freeze and thaw them. And what that freezing and thawing makes them lovely and rubbery and softens up even more. And they go on the hook lovely. Put them on a sixteen hook, no problem. Um, and with the hemp, I don't. I'm not too keen on tears water. I've tried it in my ground bit, and I don't, I don't quite like tears water. But but hemp hemp water or hemp oil is absolutely beautiful stuff. I put that I've always for years and years and years I've been pulling it in me canal mixes and uh, usually me boiling mixes and that and I just think fish love it and I might even crush some of this up I'll put a pop in a bit of a blender get a lovely milky mix I used to do that a hell of a lot on the canals 
um, a real hempy mix with cr freshly crushed hemp or liquidized hemp. Uh, so some of this might go in my mix for the weekend as well. So uh, so that's that. Oh, and uh, none of that goes in, I'm afraid. <laughs> so uh, that's a good rum, that one. I like the old rum. I don't know, I have it for a little bit, but that's a nice rum, all you rum drinkers out there. Get on the crack of a spiced rum. So uh, anyway, <laughs> on that note, there's my hemp and tears. Loads and loads. That's going to last me hopefully a few matches. Or oh, hopefully one match I'll feed the old lot and catch a shed full. But no, I mean, there's pints and pints there. What I'll do, I'll batch it up and I'll just uh, funnel it all into a bottle with all these all-important oils. And then I'll either fridge it or freeze it as it is. And uh, it's good to go. But freshly cooked hemp is... Is, is not a lot better than that but you you I, i'll happily use hemp that's a week or two old as well because it starts to ferment a little bit and you will catch fish on slightly fermented hemp as well but anything up to two weeks freshly cooked kept in a fridge like that in the oils can't beat it and the last job get a few blackberries i can pick the low ones here because it's my garden look at them beauties mm -mm -mm. I think I've deserved them after all that. It's a nice one as well. Yum yum yum. I'm a bit late now, but we'll have a few blackberries. Oh. Yum yum. Well, this is the beautiful River Avon at Evesham. Full of fish, hardest fish in the world to catch because it's match fish four times a week and uh but yeah lovely stagings on most pegs especially up this end it's a fantastic river it's got a bit of a tinge it looks brilliant it will fish rock hard today as it always does but today we're allowed blood work in just about five minutes time we're going to be drawing i'm a little bit late because i've been messing around doing stuff like this basically so uh um, this is day two, it's the big one, it's three and a half grand to the winner um, and this is the um, Evesham Championship it's um, the longest running fishing festival in the country I believe and the second biggest um, spectator event after Fishermania, sorry I'm, I'm pausing a bit because I don't want to sound like an idiot whilst people are watching. Riverfest champ. <laughs> Darren Cox. Wayne Swinscope. Who else is here? All sorts of stars. Lee Gardner's my draw flyer. Oh, no. Worst bag he's ever had. Riverfest champ. What? Failed F1 angler. <laughs> I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not Push in front of Paul. Well, I think I'm just about to finish. Oh, you got to crap John Arthur, any good ones left? There is, John yeah. Arthur. 20. <laughs> Best of luck. 20. 20. What's my hero got then today? Shocking, mate, 61. Oh, I was on 62 yesterday. Yeah. It Beautiful. was shocking. It was shocking. It's going to be shocking. <laughs> at, least at least with all the grandkids behind me and everything, I've got an excuse for that. Oh, you'll hear plenty of door slamming yeah. behind you. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is my pig today. This is pig 20. Let's see what sort of water it is. If I can get a platform in. Uh, I think that's a no. So uh, there's a, a root bridge. There's one angler below me. Sticks out a little bit more than a peg to my left. I've drawn 19 a couple of times. I've actually won my section off 19 and done pretty well off it actually with eels and bits and bobs. A lot of pike in this area, a lot of pike. Um, there's a chance of a barbel here as well. A lot of, most of the flows on the inside. 
So, uh, reasonably okay. I'd rather be like, I don't know, one to 10. But uh, yeah, at least we'll catch some fish, hopefully. Just walking on the bridge. It's my peg, second one up. It's a busy old road bridge there. Mm. Balls going on top. Chunky roach first chuck, hopefully. Just caught 
fisher truck after balling in and I didn't realise this camera wasn't on. So I'm going to go through it all over again. Starting off with a gram and a half, nice positive rig. A lot of fish in the pega already at the moment. See what we can catch before we have to top up. Topping up's a crucial thing. Get that wrong and it's uh, game over. Catching a little rotor of chuck so far. And a couple of little pummy silver bream hybrid things. Uh, so far, so good. Where's a fish a chuck or a bite to chuck? I've not had to come back for a rebate yet. I'm even having a bit of a rag blubber than we promised the box. So. I'm just trying to lower it down a metre above where I've balled it so it's all nice and in line and settled. And then uh, anywhere out from there is when you get a bite. Oh, I'll bump that one. I'm going to do that. Come on, nice size rope. I imagine it's fishing well all the way through, and a bit of bloodworm is making all the difference. I've got a few on a double bloodworm as well already. Just hang on to that, pick that out nicely. What a difference a day makes. And a little bit of blood well What a difference a day makes It's absolutely solid Now I could lose feed hemp over this but I'm a bit reluctant to at the moment I don't want the fish flashing around off the bottom I've done really well here in the past for loose feeding bloodworm. I think I won a match once to do um, loose feeding loose feeding him. Um, so uh, it can work and they are sometimes get bigger fish in them, but I don't want to attract any Mr. Esox at the moment. That was right under the surface, so we don't want too many of those. Put two on again. Just swap between one and two. Just catch as long as you can before topping up. So lowering it down, bombing it straight down. None of this airy fairy rigs with bloodworm, straight down to the killing zone. Hopefully they've not found it. Another reason not to lose feed just yet. Hopefully they'll be short lived. Okay, so we've got that short line to have a quick go on as well. But I'm reluctant to come off this whilst it's going under. If it slows down a little bit, drop straight in on that short line. It could be even faster there, but no point risking it just yet. Oh, another bleak. Where have they just come from? Another bleak on the way down. Look at that, right to death. 
See, you go bang, 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 bang. And then they go a bit funny. Suddenly, getting bleak to death. Let's quick look on that short line. I'm not going to top up just yet, we're only half hour in. perch on this line as well. Mm. I'm catching them, especially if they're shorter. on the small side. Pick a bloodworm. pimpling in front of me now. Loads. I dare say someone's ground bit upstream of me is probably all the stuff's coming off it, which is why I've mixed mine well in advance. Uh, these are a bit too small. Let's get back out where the bigger fish will hopefully be. Yeah, I mix mine well in advance before I even come here. It's not in the morning. Um, first thing in the morning. And, uh, so it's a bit less active. Is it up too early? It'll be all bits coming off it and all sorts, which I don't want. I've already seen how many small fish there are. Oh, Be really careful how you pop your rig in when it's like that. Don't make any sort of plop with it. they all come from. <sighs> there was none there in front of me. Look, there's loads between me and the next guy. So someone's feeding some of that's excited them. Better on this line. 
So we just keep going until we have to stop. specimen is it? Seems like one catches all sizes of fish. But um, the bleak seems to have calmed down a little bit now or he knows or whatever it is that they're up there. And um, they're pimping a bit more downstream. Oh no they're right in front of me again. I spoke too soon I can see him. But um, I had a little run with a caster on the up getting a little tiny rate because it's the only thing that could get through the bleak. It's still going under every single chore. Not massive but catching. They might get bigger later. I'm not sure if they will, you never know. Two. Yeah I had a little run just edging a caster through. Caught little roach again. And a couple come off on both Bloodworm and Caster. So I've just quickly put a fresh hook on. And um, my float was probably dotted just a fraction too much as well, so I've just fine-tuned my float as well, just quick. No shortage of fish there, they're just not massive. But, new six pound of these. What I want is nine or ten pound, I think. If it carries on fishing like this. I hope no one else is catching, but I'm assuming they are. Hmm. Might have to top up in a minute. Unfortunately, I don't think this is going to be a peg where the, the big roach are, which is what you want to do your eights and nine pounds. You know, you can get them three or four to the pound. What are mine? Twelve to the pound. Probably a lot more, actually. Hmm. Oh. I'll try a big maggot in a minute as well. See if that's any better. Gajin. Gajin. Right, I've just seen Steve Emery top up and go in and immediately catch a decent roach. I can't see any pimpling up there like I've got here. But being so close to the bridge it seems to attract a lot more of these tiny fish. They always seem to catch a lot of bleak and minnows either side of bridges. I'm not sure what to do yet. Top up or not, I think plodding on on these at the moment. I also can. There's enough bait on the inside. I think that inside swim often gets infested with little fish in the US to top it up. The short, the uh, longer swim, should be able to plop in balls all day there, hopefully. I think they're all suffering with small fish in these pegs. I say suffering. <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? But we're just not catching the great big roach that are in this river. 
never up the alley. Topping up the top. Out of the sun now. Behind me. It's a bit cooler. Cool down the dance floor. straight under but we also will attract a few smaller fish for a little bit nice get an eight ounce roach now isn't it just don't think they're in this this peg so much as uh, some of the others Bigger fish. Mm. Keep plodding away on the bloodworm. <clears throat> no time for snacks today. Bonuses today, I think. Well, a massive problem with leaking the peg again. Let's try a caster again. Two inches over there. Let's try that again. Something a little bit more minnow proof. Is it like? Piranhas at the moment. I'm just ligging on now with a, a caster and my two gram rig just to see. I'm tempted to put a big bunch of bloodworm on it as well just to see. Catch some more of them perch. Don't fall off this time. Perch on a caster. It's worth doing, isn't it? Yeah, big bunch of bloodworm. That's worth it, wasn't it? A big bunch of good worm. A meter or so down the peg. Chunky perch. Well, I've actually swapped to my two gram rig, inch or two off the deck, with a double blood worm. I've actually bulked this three shot right close down as well, almost like a double bulk rig. And uh, it's worked to an extent. I am getting an odd roach there, but the bleak and the minnows, well, well they are just bleak, aren't they? Uh, an absolute nightmare still. Um, I'm going to top up. I might have to start feeding hemp soon just to see if I can catch them on hemp. But if you miss a bite and then lower the rig down, it normally starts flapping around, just like that. Right along cue. Good in. I've just put my one gram rig on my short line, about three or four inches off the deck. Just had two or three slightly better roach. Tried ligging on with a heavier rig and just caught gudgeon. 
and it's got a slightly smaller hook. Back to the little ends again. what's happened but something's just clicked. The leak have all disappeared and now just to catch one of these out of the truck. It's really weird. Put in two good balls and uh, started loose feeding him. I had my first pike. It's took me up length and half. Oh, that one has as well. That was a pike. Oh, half of a length. Oh dear, don't, please don't tell me they've moved in. <laughs> if they've moved in, we're in trouble. Really bulk the rig down now. Almost like a old school gudgeon rig. Wash it straight down through them bleak. Still having a go at it. So literally an olivet and two number nines next to each other. Still, it wasn't doing any harm. I have tried a grain event, but there's nothing, nothing on it. I'm not going to waste too much time. I don't feel like there's a hemp stamp of fish there. Oh, might be another pike. Pike, pike, pike. They're only little as well. Try a worm. Not nicer. Suddenly can't get a bite on my long line. I've tried for a quick look with a bunch of cast, a uh, bunch of bloodworm over it. Basically, what's happened is I've lost. I had two fish to pike in two drops, and now I can't get a bite. So I've just quickly topped up two rich balls. Sometimes one, but I just feel two today with the amount of tiny fish. I put some chopworm in my top ups this time here, just to see if I can get some perch or something substantial. It's a four gram bodied rig that. Some people use a flat float in this, but I prefer a bodied. It's not too severe. Nail it over those balls and see if I can get some quick. Give it five minutes, not too long. I don't want to waste too long, but at the moment I don't think I'm going to win catching all those little fish. I'll have a nice weight, but I'm not going to win. I need a, just some bonus fish. Them balls. 
it's not a team match, I'm fishing to try and win, so uh, these sort of gambles are what makes and breaks yeah, sometimes. I'm sure people are catching bigger roach elsewhere, it's just down to what's in front of you, I don't think you can feed to get bigger roach, it's what's there on this river anyway. Yeah, I've had four on. <laughs> How are we doing? Is that it? Yep. Well, the match is over, and uh, who's that? That's my wife there. Hello. Say hello. And that's my daughter. Hello, Katie. What are you saying? Oh, let's pick you up then. There you are. Have you had a nice time? Yeah, you're a bit needy now. You're going to get all phased out when the crowds come and watch us weighing in. I don't know what I've got. I've had a, over 200 fish, I think, but um, they've not been very big, and the last hour has been dreadful because I've just been piked out. I've had seven pike on. Mimi. Are you waving at yourself? I've had seven pike on. I threw four balls in to try and scare the pike away. Um, it's not helped. I just couldn't catch it in the last 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Um, yeah, seven pike on has knackered me up really, but and the bleak early, just getting my rig down through the bleak um, to the bottom was a bit of a pain. But um, caught some fish and had a nice day and uh, I don't know, six pounds, something like that. Um, not going to be enough to frame, but I've had a busy day and uh, certainly better than yesterday. So, uh, what do you reckon, Katie? Am I a winner? <laughs> yep. Six pound dead. Mind John. said six pound. Chuck them in there. Cheers. And you win it today, collecting three thousand five hundred pounds.
this man has been on peg eight he can't lie straight in bed Andrew Murphy with 11 pounds well done Andrew you'll be the richest man in Wales now won't you since Tom Jones moved Well, I'm finally home. Uh, it's been a long old day, a long old uh, weekend. Uh, I'm not fishing tomorrow. It's bank holiday Monday tomorrow. I'm just having a family day tomorrow. Um, but yeah, happy with that. Happy with that result. I don't think any more than a section prize was uh, up for grabs on the day anyway from Peg 20, really. Um, I've had £6 exactly. You needed £9 a frame, and I don't know how I could have caught £9 unless I caught a few bonus perch or uh, a few big roach amongst it, but... All I've had is little, little sort of scarity size roach. That's what we call them, scarrets. So, uh, <laughs> um, Steve anyway, a couple of pegs up, has had nine pound and come second overall. Um, he's, he's obviously England class angler anyway. So, uh, but he's, he's he's had some bigger roach as well. So, uh, and you'll find that this pocket's a small fish, pocket is a big fish. James Robbins was the next peg up from him, and he said he hasn't had anything below like three ounces. So. Uh, um, whereas I haven't had anything above two ounces, probably ounce and a half. So uh, <laughs> but that's the way it is. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I'm happy with my result. Nice to get a section prize. All that effort's worthwhile in the end. So uh, yeah, going to unload the van and um, oh, put my feet up, I think, and uh, have a nice relaxing day tomorrow.